so there's a new Senate bipartisan immigration bill, uh, and we have some of the details to that bill that I'll now share with you guys. First, let's go over the good parts of the bill. There's a mandatory, what's called E-Verify for all employers, which basically means that the bill requires businesses to implement E-Verify and check the legal immigration status of workers that they hire. Now this would be a positive thing because we actually used to have a system where employers had to check whether or not the people they are hiring are legal or illegal. But then uh, in the 1980s with Ronald Reagan, he struck that down. And uh, it basically made it so you can undermine American workers and, and undercut their wages and hire people for less. This is a way that would kind of combat that, which I think is overwhelmingly positive. There's also increased border security. Now look, we're already at what's called net zero in terms of uh, immigration, which means that our border is protected. And uh, Obama has already increased border security. And uh, in fact, since the year 2008 and onwards, from the Great Recession and onwards, we've been at net zero, meaning people just aren't coming into the country. There is uh, essentially no illegal immigration happening right now. But nonetheless, I, I think it's okay to do the increased border security, and I have no problem with, with protecting the border. I mean, some uh, liberals or progressives might disagree with me, and we can have that discussion and that debate, but I have no problem with that provision, and I think it's uh, relatively benign and it's okay. Uh, there's also visas for high-skilled workers would increase 69% to 110,000 people. Also, the bill creates a new visa capped at 200,000 people to replace what's called the H-2B visa for non-agricultural workers. And the new visa allows low-skilled non-agricultural workers to look for new employment without having their visas revoked and uh, self-petition for permanent residency. So again, this is another a positive part of the legislation, which is basically more kind to both low-skilled workers and high-skilled workers. And then also, uh, deportations for people that were here before 2011 will essentially come to a halt. And uh, the only exceptions to that, of course, are people who have committed a serious crime. They will be deported. But if you haven't committed a serious crime and you were in the country since before 2011, there will essentially be a moratorium on deportations. Now, deportations under Obama have already been at a record high, by the way. So this would be a step back, in my opinion, to a more positive direction where he doesn't act like a, a douchebag right winger to try to appease the people who will never like him anyway, right? So that's the good provisions in the bill. Now to the bad provisions in the bill. There are no protections for same-sex families. Now this is something that Obama and the Democrats were pushing for, but of course the intransigent Republicans uh, find it outrageous that you would treat people equally. How dare we want to do that? Uh, the bill excludes same-sex families from expanded protections for minor children and spouses. So, in other words, a straight married couple can petition for their spouses to come to America, but the uh, Defense of Marriage Act prevents gay couples from having those same rights. This bill does not address that. It keeps that in place. So that's a fail. And then the worst part of the bill is undocumented immigrants who have been here since before December 31st, 2011, can apply for registered provisional immigrant status, and if they pass the background check and pay a fine, uh, this only happens if they pass the background check and pay a fine of $500 up front, and then this status allows them to work lawfully in the U.S., and then after 10 years, those with provisional status are eligible for permanent status, and then three years after that, they can finally apply for citizenship. Over the course of the 10-year period, undocumented immigrants will pay $2,000 in fines plus taxes on top of that, and they must demonstrate knowledge of civics and English. Now, do I think it's fair to have them take a civics test? I see no problem with that. Do I think it's fair to have them learn English? Honestly, I mean, you might have some progressives that disagree with me on this, but I don't think that's unreasonable. I think that's not a bad idea, and they should have to know at least a, a, a minimal level of English, right? But you lose me when you say they have to pay taxes the entire time they're here, they have to pay uh, $2,000 in fines on top of the taxes, and then, oh yeah, by the way, after 13 years total, you might maybe be able to get citizenship. Now, 
call me crazy, but indentured servitude didn't take as long as this bill is proposing for citizenship. Indentured servitude was less. In fact, I would venture to say if you gave these illegal immigrants the options of indentured servitude or going through this process, they might pick indentured servitude, right? So overall, is it a good bill? Despite the fact that there are some provisions that do make sense, like I just went over, no, it's a horrible bill, man. If you're going to make somebody pay taxes to the United States of America and fine them $2,000, you can't say we will take your taxes and you will get none of the benefits and you might be able to get some benefits after 13 years if uh, we deem it to be okay at that point. No, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. It's an attempt to create a permanent uh, underclass of workers that are uh, able to do the bidding of the rich corporations at their whim. That's what this is. This is a bill for corporate America.